Let's talk about security, cyber security. This is something we're increasingly talking about on this program because it's something that more and more Australians need to pay attention to, not just about making sure your virus and malware software is up to date on your computer, not just making sure that your firewall is up to date. This is looking after our data as a country, our data for businesses and our personal data. With me this morning is Michael Doughty. Now, Michael is going to be giving a, a very special talk a bit later today in the Riverina. Michael's about to jump on a plane. Mike, thanks very much. I know you're, you're at Sydney Airport this morning, so I thank you for that. Thanks for taking a few minutes. Did you get a good coffee, Mike? What a wonderful airport. I'm just looking at it. I don't know if I should fly or shop. It's fantastic. <laughs> now, you're a guest here, clearly, from the US. I think we've kind of got that by the first few words you've spoken. <laughs> I just wanted to, to get a bit of background from you to explain to people why cybersecurity is something you're so personally interested in. Well, I owned a medical laboratory, and it turned out that my laboratory was hacked, and the hacker acted like a good guy, didn't admit he took it from our workstation seven years ago, took 9,000 patients, and turns out he was working uh, with the government and Dartmouth University and, and, and just pulling the wool over so many people's eyes, and it destroyed our laboratory, and the government came after us, and I learned how ignorant technologically everyone is and the internet is taking the borders down among the countries so that that you know the ashley madison hack that's all over the news right now that server's in toronto so what's an australian to do uh, you know if the server's in toronto go to canada and sue so we're all in this stew together now from your company's point of view from the lab's point of view did you believe that you had pretty decent security measures in place yeah, that's why we fought it so hard. We couldn't give proof. He would not give proof. Every time we asked for proof, he asked for $475 an hour. Ouch. Yeah, that didn't go over well. So the involvement of the government and other stakeholders here, how does that all work? Because to hear you say the government was involved in this, that starts to make the hairs on the backs of people's necks start to bristle a little bit. What actually happened there? Well, it's what we call the Federal Trade Commission. It's an agency created by the U.S. Congress, and they appointed themselves to regulate cybersecurity. The problem is you have lawyers run by the government with a lot of power, but they don't have real specific technological knowledge. So they were being uh, fooled, and, and they didn't care. They were looking for an example to make out of someone in almost a, a regulatory panic that they've had the wrong-headed idea that they should attack anyone that gets hacked instead of going after the hackers. And we were so clear as a laboratory that takes patients' tissue and diagnoses it for cancer and takes it so seriously, not that we were perfect, but, but it was never out. And I had to spend three or four years proving it was never out. And finally, after I wrote the book, uh, which is called The Devil Inside the Beltway, we had a whistleblower come out get criminal immunity and proved it was all um, true that, that nothing had been proven and they were just coming at us to make us fold. Now, as you mentioned, Mike, the, the internet is removing the traditional international borders. And as you would be well aware, Australia and the US have close trade ties, uh, working on increasing those with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, intellectual property, security of systems, uh, the legal framework under which we operate. All of that is being discussed as well. So this is why Australia should take an interest in what is going on in the US. You know, and that was exactly right. When I, I spoke yesterday in Sydney, and, and, and the first, it was so great. The audience was so engaged because they understood, which was so refreshing to everybody, that this is something we have to understand. Each other's laws, or lack thereof, impact us. And so we have to work very collaboratively and not just really, well, we say trust yet verify. We have to read the fine print before we agree to all these things. So what are you going to be telling us today when you arrive in the Riverina in a little while? Uh, <laughs> all things being equal, your plane's not delayed. So it, when you arrive in our region in a little while, what, what are you going to be telling us? Well, I'm going to tell a story. Uh, you know, everything, when you speak uh, after longer than 20 minutes, you have to tell a story. And I'm going to tell the story uh, about what happened to my company and then, then tie it into how the government in America works and tie that into why we should care here and, and how we're all in this together and, and hopefully through story and examples. I don't, I don't tell you what the judge said. I showed you what the courts say so that we'll have more awareness. And, and be more vigilant against these um, 
some of the people, not all of them, but some of the people in the, in the government, they're trying to help us but really aren't being any help at all. For many people listening this morning, Mike, they might be thinking, look, uh, I only have my personal data, I'm not a business person. Other people might be thinking, I've only got a small business or I've got uh, a farm-based agribusiness. Why would people even want to bother with my data and my information? This really doesn't affect me. What would you tell those people? I would say that used to be true, except not with technology, that it's not so much your workstation. It's where your bank is keeping your information, where your medical practitioner is keeping information, where the government is keeping information. In the States, the worst state of security habits in our economy has been the government in the past 10 years. And you're forced to give that up. And it's the downside of technology. We've pulled everything together. And then if someone breaks it, uh, it's, there's just a whole lot there to take, not just yours, but everyone else's. There's the problem. It's really not your workstation. You should be smart about your workstation, but you need to be worried about where else the data is outside your home. Now, we know that when it comes to the legal framework around this, our legislators are always playing catch-up in Australia when it comes to working with the, the, the cyber security realm, uh, just trying to make sure that our laws are keeping pace with what's required. Is it a similar circumstance in the U.S.? It's utterly worldwide. Uh, it is worldwide. It is it's just an unfortunate fact. We are in a very early stage of an explosion, explosive new technology, almost like medicine was 150 years ago. And so we're going to have governments behind, everyone behind. And that is all the more reason why we can't attack each other. We have to help each other and, and co-educate and collaborate. Uh, and some of the politicians in America and the regulators like to sort of put head on the spikes and, and, and scare people into collaboration or into um, security, and it just, just doesn't work. It's a waste of time and energy because, unfortunately, so many of these hackers aren't even in our country. They're coming in from Russia and China and North Korea and Iran, and they're, and, you know, they're way ahead of everybody. And, and the difficulty we have there, too, is, is those countries don't necessarily have a cooperative relationship with us. Oh, no, and, and worse yet, they, they have people that they train and they work them out in their homes, and they say, well, that's nothing to do with us. That's not the government infrastructure doing that. That's some rogue person, not our problem. And this has been the real problem. So that's why we have to really work on our defenses and our offenses have to be working with each other. We can't waste our time attacking each other. My last question for you, Mike, is, is quite a personal one. How did it affect you when your company and you, your staff, the people around you, went through this? Well, you know, I feel like my staff and the patients and the doctors were victims, and I signed up to run and own the company, so I refuse to see myself that way. I'm sort of on a mission. That's why I love being in Australia. It's my third time here, and I'm going to be outlining the new book while I'm here, and it's great places to go around the world and just educate. So I try to make a terrible situation into a positive by having a bigger adventure. Well, Mike, enjoy your stay here. I know you're very jet-lagged, you poor thing. Hopefully you'll be able to get yourself a quality coffee whilst you're in the Riverina. Mike, thank you so much for taking some time for...